it sure looked good on paper. But who's gonna help you make sure it looks good on stage? This is Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson. My name is Mark Olson. Now I'm crawling around on the ground like this, looking for a wild cocoloba. I think it's nearby. I don't want to scare it off. It's a beautiful specimen. Here it is. Look at it, it's fantastic. I'm Mark Olson, and I study how plants have come to have so many different shapes and sizes. This tree, for example, looks very different from this tree. And what I'm trying to figure out is how these different shapes and sizes make these trees work different. Describing the way they look from the ground isn't the whole picture. They need light, they need air, and so they're looking up, they're collecting light from the sky. And what I'm hoping is that this view from the ground and from above will give us a more complete understanding of the way these trees work. We needed to find a way to get above the same tree that we're looking at on the ground. So I tried airplanes, and airplanes are too fast, too clunky to get out into the field. And the thing that worked best was this powered paraglider. It turns out to be perfect. The whole thing fits in our field vehicle, so we can actually take it into the field because all it is, it's a little tiny motor and a sort of a, a wing that inflates when the air hits it. As far as I know, it's the first application in biology and certainly for biodiversity exploration. Today's a great day to go flying, so we're going to go look at treetops. turns out that there are actually a whole bunch of different configurations for the clouds as looking at them from above. There's some that look like a head of broccoli looking at it from the top. There are others that look sort of like a brain. And what we suspect is that these imply different strategies for gathering light. So these are the sorts of things we can start to answer with this information. My earliest memories all involve plants and animals. That's what I would do when I had free time. I'd go out and walk around in the woods and I'd catch bugs and I'd spend hours and hours and hours looking at books with pictures of plants and animals, wanting to travel to see them. I'm never as happy as when I'm outside in the field. It's like the way you love your friends you know, you, and you think about them and, and it makes you happy to think about them because you love them. Uh, you know, they're your friends. It, they feel exactly the same way especially in certain kinds of, of vegetation. I just, I love it. But I also feel responsible for them as though they were children. It's a giant orphanage in a way, but it's an orphanage with millions of, of children, millions of little kids, and you, you love them all. You want to protect them all, uh, but you know you can't. Biologists go into biology because they love the natural world. And often what you don't realize is that you're giving yourself this front row center seat to appreciate the tragedy of what we're losing. And, uh, and that is at times personally heartbreaking. When it comes down to it, I do this for two reasons. One of which is because it makes me happy. And the other one of which is I feel that it's, I'm making important contributions, uh, things that will help humanity as a whole. Check for Wild Chronicles on your local PBS station. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium. To give a gift subscription to any National Geographic magazine, log on to nationalgeographic.com slash magazines. <laughs>